click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we have talked about boiling and its mechanism. We have also talked about the pool boiling and flow boiling. Now let us talk about a very important phenomena that is critical heat flux. Now critical heat flux. So for that we need to first of all understand the Lyukyama curve. Now the Lyukyama curve basically is plotted with respect to Q dash. This is nothing but the heat flux which is given in the watt per meter square to the delta T. Where delta T is nothing but the Tw where W stands for wall. So wall temperature minus the saturation temperature. So the difference in these two versus the heat transfer flux. If I started plotting the graph, it looks something like this. So we have seen the various regime that is formed in this chapter. The first is natural convection, then a particular nucleate boiling, then the fully developed nucleate boiling, then the transition boiling, and then the film boiling. Now in this, if the temperature is between, let's say, 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, then we end up into a partial nuclear boiling. Now between 10 to 30, now this is given when the fluid is water and the wire that we have used is a platinum wire. When we reach to a 30 degrees Celsius delta T, what is happening? We have reached to the maximum heat flux. Now, what happens after this? If I if I may reach to this point, what may happen is that the straightaway temperature may increase from let's say 30 to approximately 1000. So this, this temperature, this delta T can be, so let us write down Te, this can be higher than the, the melting temperature of the wire. So this is my melting temperature of wire. If we reach to this point, then there might be a possibility that the melting may have takes place at a local point. Now because of this small melting, there might be a possibility that this wire itself can be, can get broken. So that is why this they call as a burnout scenario. So the name for the same is critical heat flux. Why critical? Because at the, this heat flux, there is a possibility of burnout of a given wire. So that is why they call this as a critical heat flux. The famous acronym for this is CHF. So we really have to emphasize on finding the value of CHA for various scenario. Why? Because we are always interested in this area. For this area, the value of H is 10 times, 10 times more than any free convection or four convection. So the heat transfer rate by boiling specifically in case of a nucleate boiling is quite high. So to have the most efficient heat transfer rate, we try to keep our parameters somewhere in between this. But there might be a scenario that due to the delta T, due to slight increase in the delta T, we may reach to this point. So if we know what is the CHA value for the given fluid combination, fluid and wire combination, then we can make sure that we have not reached to this point. They call this point as a burnout. So basically there are so many correlationships which are available wherein for a given diameter or for a given combination of fluid and surface, the CHF can be calculated. There are so many ways of finding CHF. One is the empirical correlationship. Then second one is by conducting the experiment. Then the third one is by various numerical methods. So we can use the CFD equations 
or basically we can use the CFD software to find out the CHF or there is a lookup table that they have given. People have conducted a lot of experiment over the past decade and then they have come up with a certain coordination for a given range of diameter, velocity or for any other parameters. So if those who are interested in finding the CHF value, the research area is available for the same. Now that is it in this topic. In this topic, we try to understand what do you mean by the critical heat flux and what is its significance in the industry. Thank you for watching this video. Please stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.